morning this is my very first YouTube video and the reason is is because I'm buying today a Honda CB500X it should be arriving within the hour what you're looking at now is my old SH125 from Honda I've had it for seven years and apart from a failing battery that's never let me down the battery should have been replaced and I ignored it and it finally gave up when I needed it not to. Apart from that, it's been an excellent bike. Before that, I had a Honda Innova 125, another seven years of perfect reliability. The reason I'm making the video is so people like myself, new riders of CB500Xs, to give them an idea of my experiences and what I feel about the bike bearing in mind I've had very little training of a geared motorcycle even though I've had a license since 1982 I've never driven a geared bike in anger I'm buying a CB500X because I like the upright seating position and because of all the YouTube videos praising it and it seems what I want really you can see the hens in the background they like dust bathing. And it's a nice day in England at the moment. My weight is uh, 17 stone and I'm 6 foot 1. So I'm a pretty hefty bloke for riding bikes. But I've got an inside leg of 30 inches which is quite short for my overall height. So I don't think I'll have any problems with the uh, CB500X. I'm hoping not. In fact the... Uh, Honda CG125 I trained on for about half an hour using gears would have been alright if I'd purchased that. I bought the uh, CB500X from CJ Ball in Norwich. I wasn't going to buy anything but a Honda after the reliability and uh, I like dealing with them as well and plus the closest bike shop to where I live. The only accessory I'm going to have on the bike is a uh, centre stand. So far that's all I'm going to have. I don't know about anything else. There's no accessories on this, there's no modifications, I didn't need them. I'm not going to be going off-roading off or adventuring, mainly because south of England isn't really the place for doing that. It's not the wild open areas like you see on YouTube videos in America. I'm hoping the weather's going to stay fine at the moment. It's It's been sunny all week. It's very humid at the moment, but the sun's not out. We had torrential rain last night. That uh, followed several days of hot weather where the papers are on about global warning, skin cancer and drought. So we had a nice torrential downpour just to remind everyone it is England and it is May. So this is my very last hour of the scooter. That's the cat, and that's the last time he's going to jump on there. I'm going to just, I've decided to have the bike delivered because there's a funny junction outside the dealership in Norwich, and I don't really want to tackle that on my very first few seconds on the bike. I'd rather drive it around the little suburban roads here. There is an antisocial problem around Norwich, where I live, and that's gangs of driving schools who plague the area. And they'll be they'll be going around while I'm training as well. So, in roughly an hour's time, I'm gonna get my bike, and I'll post my experiences of it. But it's just gen a general chat about how I got on after only half an hour training of a geared bike. I should be okay. The Honda Innova I had was a step through, so that's halfway there. So I'm a bit nervous, but excited. But this bike has been really good. It's great for commuting. I use it every day for seven years, and it's never, never been laid up for very long at all. I'm going to be hoping to park the 500X under this little 
big tree. I haven't got a garage. Um, bike cover's driving me mad, so hopefully I should be able to get it in there. Maybe erect some kind of tower pauling and hopefully that'll keep most of the weather off it. But that CB500X will be used every day. And it'll be used every day for about 10 years at least. I don't, I don't change bikes. I took a long time deciding to buy this. So, I'll post more details later. Here it is, the brand new bike. The CB500X in chromosove, chromosphere candy red. I'm not too keen on the graphics, but beggars can't be choosers. I wasn't really sure what colour to have, either silver or the black or the red. But I've been riding it now for 10 miles for about 45 minutes around the uh, back roads of uh, Norfolk and uh, I've got on really well. My fingers are tingling a bit though, I noticed there was a bit more vibration through the handlebars than I was expecting but I have been riding a scooter for 14 years so the extra 400cc or whatever is bound to make a difference and the gear shift lever seems a little bit close to the peg and these uh, trainers are not ideal at all, my feet take keep shifting with these so I need to get some kind of a motorcycle boot or something but I'll be grudge paying £350 for proper motorcycle boots which I saw in a mo motorcycle accessory shop in uh, last week along with £600 helmets and £350 jackets. That seems a big premium for motorcycle gear. My steel toe cap leather boots, the Walt brand, cost £40. I'm sure if they were on a motorcycle shelf shop they'd be over £200. That seems a bit of a premium on motorcycle gear, that's in my opinion. I noticed when I was in the accessory shop last week, there was a couple A60 in there-ish. Both had brand new Ducatis and a top to toe in very expensive gear. I think this is who motorcycle manufacturers are now aiming at. They want rich hobbyists taken over instead of uh, Poor people who used to ride motorcycles in 1982 as cheap modes of transport. There seems to be a shift now. In fact, when you see men standing outside motorcycle shops or on big, bigger bikes, a lot bigger than this, they all seem aged over 40. Anyway, I really need to have some different shoes or boots for my feet, definitely. Uh, the vibration through the handlebars, I'm not sure if it's because I've got these summer summer gloves there. They might not be helping really. But so far so good. I've stalled it once. I'm being a bit hesitant, but easier than I thought. I was expecting it to be a bit more tricky and a bit more dodgy. I've read stories of twitchy throttles and things like that. But uh I found it quite okay really for the first hour or so and I'm really pleased. So from a brand new rider, 45 minutes training, I coped very well on this and found it easy, easier than I expected. I've still got a lot to learn and I've still got a lot of experience to gain on it. I won't be going fast. I haven't had it out of fourth gear or been above 40 miles an hour yet. But I've been down some funny tracks around Norfolk. Which I really shouldn't have gone down really because I was going too slow and it was a bit dodgy. I had to pull it out of the way for a car and things like that. But uh, so far so good. And that's it. The bike back in its uh, parking bay now. 
I'm just getting a bit further to get, uh, stop the rain getting at it. I found the centre stand's very easy to uh, use. It slides on very easily. I thought it might be a bit more of a struggle, but it wasn't. After I stopped uh, in the countryside, I decided to go in the city centre and buy my new helmet. An AGV one, but bottom end of the range. It cost £190. I needed it. The other one was rattling around on my head and I'd had it seven years. So I then uh, took it in the city centre and that's when the limitations uh, were exposed. I was having a few problems first to second very smoothly. I stalled it and uh, felt a little bit uncomfortable. When I, see, when I get going second to third and moving in the traffic like that it feels very natural it's just pulling from first to second and also not being always exactly sure what gear I'm in which it hasn't got a gear indicator and uh, I've read it all about that and heard about it it'd be nice if I could have a gear indicator just to begin with at least but that's when uh, you really get notice lack of experience is when you're going in busy traffic and hills but uh, I got there and back without anyone doing anything silly in a car which would have really thrown me but it seems to be okay all, all, all being said and done I've only had it a couple of hours and I'm driving in the city centre and I've run about 20 miles now and uh, everything's good. I think the vibration in the handlebars might be my tension and nerves and gripping it and probably clinging on a bit too tightly. I don't know. But uh, overall I'm very pleased with it. And uh, I've noticed big bikes start nodding at me, which I never got that on there. Uh, scooter. I've passed a couple of big bikes and they nod, which is a bit strange. I wasn't expecting that. Anyway, so that's my experiences of day one in the Honda CB500X. I'm very pleased with it. It didn't rain. And for a new rider, it's surprisingly easy, easy to ride with limitations on first to second gear and just a bit unsure really, a bit unsteady with it sometimes and I seem to have this urge of wanting to press down on the uh, gear shift to, to, to go up the gears I'm not sure, I think maybe me and over step through thing was that where you kept pressing downwards I want the urge to press downwards all the time well, instead of upwards. And also neutral is a bit funny to find as well, but these are all teething problems. I can't expect to move into a big bike, because this is a big bike to me. I don't call this a learner bike or a first bike. It's uh, it's big compared to what I had. And uh, so I can't expect just to breeze into it like I would another scooter. So I'll hopefully post more videos as time goes and if I decide to uh, do anything different. But I can feel my hands now while I'm holding this mobile phone up. They feel a bit a little bit sore and I think I might be just gripping it a bit too much and feeling a bit a bit nervous. I think that city centre driving kind of uh, knocked me back a bit. Driving around the country roads was easy. Getting in traffic and having to think about things has pushed the learning curve up a bit and I'm noticing my lack of experience more. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. There'll be more to come.